What's up, hand dudes? Peter Ron Panda here. Hey, I've got my ease on the watch. It's so easy to get ease on. Uh, you can check them out at easeonwatch.com. I picked this one up on Amazon. It's kind of a cool look looking box, but I wanted to show it to you. I was really intrigued by it uh, because it's an ease on compass barometer. Uh, what do you call it? Like an ABC type of watch. Looks pretty cool. Barometer, compass, altimeter. A, B, C. Right there. And digital kind of looks like you know, one of the Suntus or something like that. So I thought I would check it out because if it does all of that well, the 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 reality is I have a watch that's like a $500 watch, not the world's most expensive watch, but a nice watch that's Citizen Altacron, which is also an ABC watch, but they're kind of pricey and so pricey in fact that sometimes you're worried about busting them up too much. So this is a true unboxing here. I'm pulling out the watch here, but obviously there's some other stuff I think in this box. Looks like the instructions are, oh, there we go. Instructions are down here. And my point is, you know, this is a fraction of what that Citizen Ultracron costs. And if it does all the same things, uh, I would rather take this watch on my excursions. Now, one thing I will point out, which makes it a little different than my Ultracron, is that I think uh, this is a standard quartz movement, which the Ultracron is too, but the Citizen Eco Drives are solar powered. And so you aren't going to get the ability to maybe have power wherever you are indefinitely as long as there's sun. Now, what this does look like and what I actually really like, I know some people poo-poo this. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna draw a line in the sand here and say, you're wrong, I'm right. That it has this coin cut here, this, this, this channel cut here so that you can use a quarter, open this up and service the battery yourself easily. Now, people are like, oh, man, I wish it were automatic or mechanical or something like that or solar powered. You know what? To be able to uh, open this up and throw in another battery easily without tools, without little micro screwdrivers is a huge advantage. I I think it's actually a big miss for other companies not to do that. But um, you can get batteries anywhere, the grocery store, your Walgreens, what have you. Um, and so it's just kind of nice to have that because let's say it does go dead. Uh, the day you're, you're before you're about to go out on your trip, well, boom, put this in, no sweat. So you do have this back here, uh, the, kind of the cases looks like it's screwed together with these hex bolts, um, but then you have very much what it looks like serviceable battery, and they, they do you the favor of showing you that it's a CR2032 battery in there. Water resistant 50 meters, probably more than, than you'll ever need, and it shows you open and close. So anyway... I'll get off my soapbox on that. Uh, I actually really like the look so far. The <laughs> sticker on the front here is in Chinese, I think. And what you have is kind of a very round, kind of traditional, but kind of a high-tech looking case. Um, obviously kind of a polished look. The uh, the sensors, which are probably behind this, these little pinholes right there, are actually inside the case on my Altacron, they kind of protrude, kind of the sensor housing protrudes quite a bit. Uh, you can see that polished case looks pretty nice. Now there are a little, there are some telltale signs that this is a little cheaper. I'm trying to find them. You can see here like just a little bit of like imperfection in the case finish right there. I mean, most of the case looks pretty good. I don't know if you can see that, but whatever. Um, lugs droop down. Everything's pretty compact. You know, in terms of size, I don't think this watch is very large. I would call it like a 42 millimeter. Uh, we can verify that. Rubber, plasticky rubber strap. You know, not the super high quality. And it's really thin, which is really nice so that you don't have this huge thick strap. But then you also have these wide cutouts for the tang here. And then kind of a cool looking buckle. Um, these are kind of nice because of, I think it will help vent a you know, and keep it from getting clammy or sweaty. But uh, not a huge, huge watch. I have a pretty pretty big wrist. And so this is what it looks like on my wrist. I think it looks it looks good, to be honest. I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously not on or running. I'll have to figure out how to do that. Uh, but, you know, from a size perspective, I think it looks pretty good. Let me give you an actual size measurement here let's do it without the crown and with the crown yeah. 43 millimeters 
This has a millimeter off, I guess. And if we do it with the crown here, get to 46. So I guess not a small watch, quote unquote small, but not a big oversized kind of outdoor G-Shock type of watch either, which is kind of nice. Um, so polished case here. And then you can see you have like this insert underneath the, the crystal, which I'm assuming is just mineral or plastic uh, with the printing on it, which shows you what each of these pushes are. Light mode barometer compass and altimeter and then we have some markings on here because presumably what you'll have is that standard black liquid crystal display and especially when you're using the compass it'll probably give you a little arrow where north is and then ease on down here so let's let me get this open because i'm assuming that the battery isn't the whole thing is inactive because the battery is probably covered with plastic or something like that so let's check that out first And so there we have the Maxell CR2032. Okay, so I checked the battery and <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the battery. What actually happened here is that after a long period of non-use, the watch will go into sleeping mode. And so you can actually force it to go into sleeping mode and you can force it to come out of sleeping mode, which we're actually gonna have to do here. Um, by pressing the A, B, C, and D button all at the same time will force it to go into sleeping mode if you're in time mode and it will force it to come out, theoretically, which we're going to try here. So we're going to hold them down. This is probably not the easiest thing to do. I kind of need three hands to do it, but let's go ahead and there we go. Boom. Just like that. Now, the thing about it is, as I understand the sleeping mode, is it will keep time. It's kind of going into a low power consumption mode so that it can keep actual time. So. Mm, you know, this isn't correct in terms of the time, but the date is actually pretty close. You can see a ticking seconds hand, essentially, down here on the outer ring. Day, AM, PM, time, the date, and then it's counting the seconds as well. Uh, we also have a light button right there, which we'll see how that works. So if I hit the light button, it has kind of an indiglo like light i mean it really lights that up well and it's very very easy to read and not only just lights up the numbers but the whole dial so pretty cool seems to work pretty well and you can definitely read everything i dig that now let's play with some of the other buttons here if we hit the mode button oh i can i can get the year so that is correct back to seconds mode and year Okay, now let's try some of these ABC functions. Let's start with barometer. And if I hit that, look at that, it's giving me, basically it looks like it's tracking the pressure over time. So it's giving you a kind of a little visual representation that pressure is coming down. So we might be in for some crappy weather. And it says 29 degrees. Celsius. I wonder if I. Then you hit the mode button to go back to. <laughs> to basically return. So, that's kind of cool. Let's go back. Let's hit compass. Let's see what it does here. Hmm. Interesting. So looks like it kind of gives you the four points of the compass. I'm, I'm thinking that these six bars here is what it's saying north is because if I kind of rotate it like this and kind of the forward portion of the watch is pointing there, it's now it's telling me due south. And because north is behind me, if I do this, it should tell me where I'm heading north. So it's kind of cool. So if you're wearing it on your wrist like this, and you're in the compass mode, it'll tell you which direction you're heading. And the cool thing is it's giving you some some letters there, south by southwest, south, southwest. Um, and then also uh, your direction in degrees, so 194 degrees. So pretty cool. I I'm pretty impressed with that. And it certainly seems like the response is very quick. Obviously, I didn't press anything in the compass, so after a certain amount of time, it will go back to the regular clock mode. 
but it's very quick acquisition. I'm pretty impressed with that. So obviously it's kind of, um, you know, reading, taking compass readings all the time. And if we hit the altimeter here, I like that it always tells you what mode that you're going into. And it's telling me uh, nine meters. Nope, it's telling me 223 meters. Which I actually think is pretty close. I was gonna say nine meters doesn't seem right. Um, and because I think this is pretty right that we're at like five, 600 feet above sea level here. And so I'm pretty impressed with that. And it also looks like it's kind of logging that over time too. Um, I didn't have kind of the the length of history here we did in the barometer, but I'm assuming that maybe you get that kind of uh, graph in terms of altitude as well. So I'll be honest, I'm pretty impressed with this thing. Uh, I am stoked that it's smart enough to kind of go into low power if it, detecting that you haven't used it a lot. Um, I like all these functions. I'm so far, my the orientation on the compass is actually totally right. I'm sitting, I'm facing south right now. And uh, it's a small compact size with, you know, water resistance. Um, and it looks pretty good. So go back here to the to the front. Um, you know, it's even maybe a little flashier because of all this kind of polished silver type of finish than a lot of outdoor sports watches. But it is so much cheaper than my Altacron, you know, I can wear it without kind of having to worry about it too. So uh, this Ezon ABC watch, I think, is actually kind of a steal, to be honest. Uh, so if you're looking to go adventuring outdoors, you want some tools built right into your wrist, either for giggles or for actual kind of use to track your hikes and stay safe, uh, check it out. I'll put a link to it in the description. But uh, I'll definitely give this a thumbs up so far. Peter Von Panda, out.